a video about identity politics rhetoric, how to deal with it, and how to defend yourself from unfair criticism related to it. Having asked ChatGPT about identity squatting, its answer confirmed what I had long suspected. Neo-socialist dogma is prevalent enough to have crept unseen into our national curriculums, our workplaces and our shops. This fast spreading, agitational and radical political vision which ascribes us a certain utopian or dystopian future in which the worst of human depravity is standardised within common everyday behaviours against us where we fail to submit to it or with us where we stand against others who resist it. Now it began about 2000, maybe 1996 actually, with the rise of minority rebalancing laws, rose to prominence through university campuses where it currently controls the education of entire generations of children, unable to resist. Now we see these people every day more often than not addressing these children to fill their heads with seditious concepts of freedom through violence or political unrest. They are the labelling generation, confounding us all with a myriad of new pronouns and other terms which make little sense in traditional conversations and serve as distractions, pollutants and confusion factors. We see them in our social media conversations, we see them in our lives and a strategy is required to safely navigate those moments in a positive way. And so this is my guide to others like me who don't have the silky skills of Dr. Jordan Peterson and just want to get on with their life in a positive way without drama. Now whether or not this unavoidable hell has already been achieved by the radical left is arguable, but with the assumption that we can avoid it, we shall proceed and I approach the subject with intrepidation but positivity knowing that at least in part I will likely face well-funded and organized resistance uh, attempts to smear and slander me but the truth must be spoken despite these risks so here I am so I recorded the entire process including the bare live transcripts of my conversations with ChatGPT which you can see on the screen other clips have been taken from YouTube, uh, Wikipedia Googleable sources that you can follow for yourself. So nothing here is based on thin air. It's all based on um, public discourse, you know, legal, legitimate information. Uh, but I must give you a sensitive content warning. If you're easily triggered by these uh, concepts or if you're affected by them, you know, if you're like an abuse victim or if someone you know is affected, while I would advise that you, you do learn about these things, I, I probably would say that get someone to watch it for you or with you. Um, and just be, be aware of the content. So uh, the goal is likely often to obtain information like passwords or addresses, social sensitive information, uh, the whereabouts of someone or documentation licenses, publicly available data, and their private or personal views, things which should not be made public or used as a weapon in public against people, you know, things which are private to them. Um, that's the kind of thing that they will try and find out to use against you. So um, I think when talking about identity squatting, which is when someone pretends to be a different identity so that they can gain um, some sort of advantage or benefit through that and, you know, actual legitimate identity politics discussion, when we consider these two things, we should be careful because they are in some places quite similar and there's a fair amount of overlap. So. Um, as the wise AI has suggested, we should approach with caution. And with that caution, we can engineer our lives to exclude sources of political misery and oppression without having to surrender our voice or our identity or to, um, to feign insincere membership of a group to become something we're not and parrot the party line. We don't have to do that. And uh, I will give you some tips how I have avoided doing that. I guess my initial piece of advice would be, as cynical as it sounds, try to avoid having any conversations with uh, or about anything related to gender or identity whatsoever when you're dealing with someone who's a non-binary person or anyone who's just traumatised or confused about something related to that. Now I watched a video on BBC3 
actually called what not to say to a non-binary person and that was one of the things on there was don't talk about that so realistically it's going to be such a difficult conversation they're highly wound up already they're looking to you know um, not necessarily have a go at someone but there's emotion they're looking to come out and if you give them an avenue they're gonna it, it's you that's going to get it in the neck so try and avoid that um, I asked the AI what reasons people would do this for if it's not for political motivation um, which it gave so you can read those in the background there um, but they're all very very similar I mean I'd go as far as saying they're the same <clears throat> they're the same things that motivate the political ideology so uh, and the comments you know prank or amusement memeing um, uh, tropes and uh, using little pepe and all that kind of thing is there revenge is something which um, it features highly in a lot of ideologies which I can't name just part of the reason I'm doing this video we've got to be very careful how we talk about things which we can't name because obviously that's oppression and when they're pointing at you saying we're oppressed you can't talk about us they put you in a very difficult position so the best thing to do is to avoid talking to them wherever possible and then when you do have to talk to them make absolutely no references towards their appearance or their views or anything or pick out something neutral that you can and just focus on that and the further they try and push you towards something which is not neutral just veer away from it if they push you in a corner and you can say nothing then just say nothing that's what i do if i'm put in a corner where uh, you know they they put they ask you a question which leaves you between two answers which are bad just don't answer don't say anything there's more to be said for walking away in that scenario even though you feel like it's a failure or a loss uh, it, it's not it's definitely where what you've got to keep in mind is a lot of these people are psychologically damaged or really young and they've not you know they've not developed so um, it's difficult for them so yeah avoid the uh, the talking where possible only talk about neutral things um, well I've, I'll go through the points the politics of this is such that it's it's aimed at children because they're the people who don't know their identity yet so things like race gender sexuality ethnicity even though it should be latent something which doesn't change with children it's all up in the air you can definitely convince children of pretty much anything especially when you're in a position of authority a teacher a doctor um, a priest or something like that or a, a, a what are they called you know the mosque priests imams something like that so uh, but it doesn't have to be religious it can be a, a, a socialist who is in government posing as something else who wants you to, to actually bring down the government so uh, be careful of that um, identity politics does seem to empower marginalized groups but the thing is they control which groups are marginalized or considered marginalized so you've got to be careful there and they don't like you to have an individual personality so identity squatting is something they're going to use against individuals it doesn't work against other groups you can't you can't claim you're a trans um poc against tesco it just won't work because tesco has systems it has to be against individuals so be careful of that um, and approach the issues with nuance like it says here engage in the respectful open dialogue but be extremely careful like I say because they'll try and loop you into a discussion and then loop you into a corner where you won't be able to say anything positive and the next thing that comes out of your mouth is going to be something which indicts you and probably makes you look bad in a way that you're really not so that's it be careful of that they want to label you badly don't let them so um, Apart from that, I think there's not much more to say on why people do these things. So let's go into the ways in which we can detect a person is going to be uh, doing this to us. You know, so how do we spot this? Because they're quite sneaky. They don't want to be spotted. The ones that are aware that they're doing it are trying to not be detected. And the ones who are unaware, the brainwashed sheeple, if you like, they don't even know they're doing it. So you've got to tread carefully so um, pay attention to what their arguments actually are rather than the emotive way and the context in which they give you those answers just listen to the actual facts like bullet point what I like to do is put in I type in someone's speech into GPT and I say give me a non-biased bullet point summary of this and then just read through it and it usually does a pretty good job so uh, yeah checking their sources and stuff another thing that chat GPT can help with or Google or books or there's a million ways to do that. that's quite simple I just ordered a couple of books off Amazon a couple of Korans a socialist manifesto some other stuff just so I can you know soapbox like I am now but I can be accurate and not biased and not discriminatory 
The only things I discriminate against are things which are harmful, which is what discrimination really is for. That's positive discrimination. It's discriminating against fire so you don't get burnt, discriminating against predators so you don't get eaten. I don't think it's wise to proclaim that all non-binary people are dangerous to children. That's not correct. I think most non-binary people are children themselves. They seem to all be very young, very impressionable, and uh, victims of some form of manipulation or other. So uh, we should be protecting them from themselves, their own insecure, inexperienced selves. You know, they might do themselves harm and make decisions which will wreck the rest of their lives. Nonetheless, the behaviour of these mind-controlled radicals is nothing short of abhorrent. Switching identities throughout their day in order to gaslight others into attacking is commonplace, as you can see in this footage here. This is uh, trans activists, uh, teenage trans activists, deciding they're going to be lesbians. It's actually men who are now women who are now lesbians. And it's causing trouble. I mean, they're even fighting the police and stuff, so um, I don't know what they think they're doing. And the open provocation is a result of the victim mode programming, which we have all seen. Uh, many young people are experiencing it in their classrooms and many people see it in their workplaces. You know, it's trained in and we must resist it. It's tearing families apart. It weakens the individuals and the ties between them in order to pull the victims closer to the political cause. Unfortunately, if you're not one of them, you're the enemy. So you don't need to have wronged them or angered them or done anything wrong but you must repeat the party line you must toe the line or else i myself have recently clashed swords with a previously close family member because of this issue uh, the one decided after 40 years 41 years of close friendship that i was suddenly a racist sexist horrible bigot a mean person uh, this obviously put some strain on our relationship, which eventually grew to include every other member of the family. So she doesn't speak to any of us, and we can't speak to her or see her children, who are too young to understand any of this. Uh, we don't see them. No, we, we don't exist, as far as she's concerned. Uh, I think what that's called is no contact. No contact is what fundamentalists and extremists will attempt to have their target commit to. It means you completely avoid any contact with those you're excluding. So in her case, it was us, the whole family. Um, we didn't agree with her. <clears throat> Excuse me. We weren't rude about it. We were very polite. We just, I, I said first, I had some concerns. I was a bit worried about her. And the rest of the family backed me up. And then we all got uh, excluded. So what happens is you change your number, block everybody, you move away, you ignore all attempts uh, of contact and if they do manage to contact you you accuse them of being control freaks or overly nosy and you know you say that you don't feel safe and all this kind of thing so it's it's not pretty it doesn't matter which side of it you're on it's really not very nice so um, yeah I think no contact is what the fundamentalists and extremists will attempt to have the person stick to and definitely not veer from because any any contact could you know they might say something they might let the cat out of the bag so to speak so it's very difficult especially when it's a family member you love so I think where you're experiencing this the temptation is to be offended yourself and become a false victim if you like and start emotionally proclaiming your righteousness and how wronged you are I would strongly advise against this at all costs all that will do is drive them further into hiding <clears throat> and further away from you and if like with me the person is extremely vulnerable and surrounded by snakes and you're worried about them you may be the last stop they can jump off at before they ride that train to complete radicalization so it's a, a very dangerous thing to approach because if you get it wrong it could have serious ramifications for you and for the person themselves I'll spare you the time of watching all the footage, <clears throat> but I mean, there's plenty of footage out there to demonstrate the kind of behaviors that we're talking about here. As before, in the background of this video, you can see the, the transcript of my conversation with the AI, which searches all the internet data it could find, um, you know, within the abstract and, and repeats that. So if you'd like more details, they're in there. But I mean, it's things that you've seen before. It's bullying, harassment, um, having a prejudiced attitude towards someone and, you know, 
the the opposite could be true you could accuse someone of having that attitude when they don't and um threats of violence so you don't have to necessarily say i'm going to hit you or i'm going to stab you or make a threat of violence but you could infer you can influence someone by um sort of intimidating them with a threat of something violent or you know it doesn't have to be physical violence with a threat of emotional violence sexual violence there's all kinds of different types of violence they could use so it's it's something we've all got to be very careful of so that's why i've made this video so we're coming near to the end now what i'm going to do is wrap it up um yeah i thought i'd ask the ai well, what's the best way to go about putting this out on the internet so i don't fall foul of the terms and service so that's what it said to me and uh, hopefully i have made a good video despite the limitations set by the ai which are actually set by people and the ai is just repeating them so um I was actually going to make a snazzy kind of intro message or have some graphics or something like that and then I thought you know what intros just annoy me they're pretentious they're too obnoxiously long and, and boring so I won't do that and I thought I'll just get the AI to write me a statement so um, the prompt was make it short um, and it has to be a summary of this sentence I wish to help protect your rights <laughs> I'm very slow to type. Can't believe I'm doing this live after this long video. I can't believe I kept it on time. Yeah, so here we go. <clears throat> I wish to help protect your rights, but also for you to learn that you must protect your own rights. I thought that might be important to say. By avoiding contact with those who would harm them. And what it said was quite revealing. <laughs> I was expecting a load of legal jargon but it didn't arrive so um, yeah hello everyone in today's video I want to talk about how we can protect our rights in the face of identity politics and identity squatting while it's important to stand up for what we believe in and advocate for our values we also need to be mindful of those who would use aggressive tactics to undermine our rights and our freedoms by understanding these tactics, we're learning how to respond to them effectively, we can protect ourselves and promote a more respectful and inclusive society. Um, I hope they mean inclusive properly, not the way that it's used currently. So let's work together to defend our rights and stand up against discrimination and harassment and remember that we have a role to play in creating a more just and equitable world. <laughs> it's not so bad, is it? I didn't go for the titles, here are the titles it wanted me to use. Politics in squatting, how to protect your rights, bit basic. Beware of identity squatters, too clickbaity. Navigating identity politics, that's a good start, but the rest of it's too long. So yeah, uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to go for yet, none of those. So yeah, that's the end of the video, and I uh, hope it was useful for you. I'll probably revisit this topic later on when more is known, but it's still quite new, so apologies if I've upset anyone retrospectively. Looking forward, in about 10 years' time I'll be accused of something, being a certain something for this, I'll get a label. Uh, for the rest of you, enjoy your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.